Good evening. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Okay, in this moment, we are going to begin with this last session. You know that we are at the end of the course. Today is the last day. So we are going to continue with the things that we were doing. Um, give me a moment. I'm going to charge the platform. In this case, it's just like to see the last information that we have there. Um. And then we are going to continue with the information that we were uh, listening yesterday that is about the uh, past tense. And I was saying that we are going to see something related to the future. So we are going to um, see some details about the structures that we can use in future. But right now we are going to uh, end with the information that we have on the platform just to uh, complete that program of uh, topics that we have there. And then we are going to continue with the last thing that we are going to talk about today. And then you are going to be free of this uh, module. So we are just going to see what is the last thing or what is the last topic that it is supposed that we can like uh, a study on the platform this day, but give me a moment is charging. Okay, it's taking a couple of minutes to complete um, to charge. So we're going to begin and then we are going to see what is the topics that we have on the platform because I think it's going to be kind of slow. Uh, so we are going to continue with the last of the, um, the parts of the past. So we are going to continue giving just key ideas about the use of the different tenses that we have in, in this past tense. And then when we finish the past tense, we are going to talk about the future. And we are going to see some details related to the information or um, how can we use the future and in which cases we are going to use that information. It's going to be like uh, not too long because you know that um, Yesterday we were talking about 
uh, different details, but in this case, they are just short ideas. And in this case, we are not going to talk about um, structures like uh, how to create a statement or how to, to create questions. In this case, it's just like a specific ideas related to the information. So we're going to see what is the last of these, um, we can say like uh, category, a structure, part, different things. Vamos a ver la última parte de lo que es la estructura de los pasados, o sea, de los tiempos pasados. Entonces, estábamos hablando del simple past. We have here the past simple. Then we have the past perfect simple. And yesterday we also talked about, let me see. the past continuous, and now we are going to talk about the past perfect continuous. Así que vamos a ver um, un poco sobre esta última Because you know that we just have one hour, uh, one hour left. In this case, it's not like the complete hour. It's just like um, a couple of minutes. So we are going to continue with when should I use the past perfect continuous. Vamos a ver nada más en los usos o cuándo vamos a utilizar lo que es el pasado perfecto continuo. And you know that in this case is like two different ideas. En este vamos, vamos a ser bastante cortos con la información porque solo vamos a dar dos ideas principales o dos razones de por qué deberíamos de usar lo que es el pasado perfecto continuo. Quiere decir que esta información no es muy extensa, es bastante corta. If um if you can like notice if maybe I am kind of a slow writing or something like that is because I am not using my glasses, but I don't know where are they. I had um a meeting and I don't know where they are. Because I was afraid to to lose them. So at the end I lost them. But in my house. So number one. Let me see here. In the number one said that something that start in the past and continue up to another action or time in the past. The past perfect continuous tell us how long, just like the present perfect continuous, but this time the action continues up to a point in the past rather than the present. Usually we use for plus time and we can also uh, use the past perfect simple here. And in this case, we are going to use also the, um, the steady verbs. Aquí vamos a utilizar esta estructura para eh, hablar de acciones, obviamente del pasado, ya que estamos en ese tiempo, ¿verdad? En el, en el, en el tiempo pasado. Y... Esto nos dice a nosotros qué tanto tiempo, o sea, cuál es la duración de una acción. Y obviamente esta acción empieza y termina en el pasado, no es como en el presente, ¿verdad? Que tiene que ver con acciones que quizás eh, comenzaron en el pasado, pero que tienen influencia en el presente. Y vamos a utilizar el power plus time y también podemos utilizar los steady verbs. En este caso no hay... No hay eh, no es como una gran diferencia, ¿verdad?
And we are going to see three different examples. Because it's saying that we have a very specific structure in this case, in which we are using four plus time. And we have, she had been working at that company for a year when she met James. Next one. I'd been walking for hours when I finally found the house. We've been living in Berlin for three months when we have to leave. And we are going to see the number two, that is the last one of this, um, of this tense. Solo tenemos dos, so we are going to complete this one. And it says that something that finished just before a, another event in the past. This is usually used to show a result at a time in the past. It is very similar to the present perfect continuous, but the action finished before um, another time in the past, rather than finishing before the present. Okay, in this case, we are going to have, uh, again, three different examples to understand better what is the information that we have related to the second idea about the 
uh, the present perfect, I mean, the past perfect continuous. So we have the first example and it says, the pavement was wet, it had been raining. En este caso, como aquí dice que algo ha finalizado justo antes que otro evento en el pasado, que obviamente esto es usualmente usado para eh, mostrar un resultado de un tiempo específico en el pasado, ¿verdad? Es bastante similar a lo que hablábamos ya del, del presente, pero obviamente esta acción termina antes en que otro, ¿verdad? En el pasado. Y pues obviamente ese ya no va a continuar en el presente, sino que es eh, sobre todo en el pasado. Entonces, dice que el pavimento estaba húmedo y había estado lloviendo. En este caso, se refiere a que eh, la lluvia había terminado antes del de tiempo que nosotros estamos describiendo en el pasado. ¿Qué podría ser, verdad? Este el resultado de, eh, de la lluvia. Como el resultado es que el pavimento estaba húmedo. Y que obviamente había estado lloviendo antes. Por eso es que el pavimento pues, estaba húmedo en ese momento. The children had been playing and so the room was a mess. The children had been playing and so the room was a mes. Aquí ya, ya vemos, ¿verdad? ¿Cuál es el resultado y cuál es la acción de la que nosotros estamos hablando? Está hablando, ¿verdad? De que la habitación estaba hecha un desastre. ¿Por qué? Porque los niños habían estado jugando en esa habitación. And the last one, I've been working before I saw Before I saw you, and that's why I was really tired. ¿Cuál es el resultado aquí? Eh, que estamos cansados, ¿verdad? Ahora, ¿por qué estábamos cansados? Porque habíamos estado trabajando. Entonces, por eso, antes de ver a la persona con la que nos reunimos, eh, habíamos estado um, trabajando y pues obviamente al finalizar nuestro trabajo resultó que nosotros estábamos muy cansados. Now, in this case, we have finished the part of the past. Now we are going to uh, see some ideas related to the future. I know that this is not like... Um, a very specific part of the topics that we have on the platform, but I think it is important that we can make like um the review of the future to see what are the difference between the um the structures and the ideas or the uses that we can give to the present and to the past. So in this case, we are going to talk about a little bit um about wheel shall and be going to and then we are going to see other structure but in this case we are going to focus on and will at the first uh, place so we are going to have here And we have here wheel. Now we're going to talk about the use of wheel. And we use the future simple with wheel to predict the future. It is the basic way we talk about the future in English. And we often use it if there is no reason to use another uh, future tense. We can use it for future facts or for things that are less certain.
Ok, en este caso nosotros utilizamos el will cuando estamos hablando de eh, predicciones para el futuro, cuando estamos hablando de cosas que van a suceder más adelante. Eh, en este caso tenemos que eh, tener en, eh, algo claro que esto es cuando es algo no tan certero. So in this case is something that we are thinking about that maybe it's going to happen, but at the same time, you are not um, too sure that it is going to happen. It's like a, something imaginary that we are thinking or that we are wanting to um, to happen in the future, but in this case, it's not a, something that is kind of certain. It's kind of, it's nada más desear que suceda algo, pero que no estamos seguros que vaya a suceder. And we have two different examples. And we need to pay attention to the examples because we are going to do something right now. And in the examples, we have the first one. The sun will rise at 7 a.m. The sun will rise at 7 a.m. I think the conservatives will win the next election. I think the conservatives will win the next election. Okay, son cosas que nosotros pensamos para el futuro. Ahora, you're going to help me with your ideas. Uh, you are going to tell me two different sentences or you are going to write on the chat two different sentences using will, but thinking about something that is going to happen this weekend. Vamos a escribir dos oraciones en el chat que tengan el uso de will, pero que hablen de dos cosas que ustedes creen que pueden pasar el fin de semana. Acuérdense, son cosas que no son tan certeras. Son cosas que quizás en algunos casos nos gustaría que llegara a pasar o que nosotros creemos que va a pasar. For this activity, we have five minutes. It's 8.27. 32, I guess. A las 8.32 más o menos, vamos a leer las oraciones que ustedes están creando. So we have five minutes to write two sentences using will to uh, say something related to activities that are, or things that are going to happen this weekend. So let's begin.
I'm going to stop sharing the, the document because I'm going to um, add some images to the document. So I'm going to take this for a couple of minutes and then I'm going to show you what are the images uh, or the information that we have on the images about. So I'm going to take this out and you are going to continue thinking about the, the ideas that you have about the future. Okay, in the document, you are going to find these images in which you are going to see the structures for these um, dance. In this case, it's just to have the information. And in this case, we begin with wheel in which we have signal words, when to use, how to form, and other information. And signal words we have tomorrow, next week, in a year, in 2048. 
And when to use, unplanned future, rapid decision, prediction, speculation, promises, offer, and treats. Aquí en, en cuando usamos nosotros el will es cuando estamos hablando de un futuro que no estamos planeando. O sea que es lo que salga, ¿verdad? En las decisiones rápidas. También lo utilizamos para predicciones, especulaciones, promesas o cuando ofrecemos algo, ¿verdad? O para eh, tratos o cosas así. Eh, o amenazas incluso. Eh, y luego nos aparece cómo formarlo. Now, we are going to see what are the um, statements that you have wrote on the chat, and I'm going to make the list. So, let's see. I will visit my grandmother this weekend, okay? I will visit my grandmother this weekend. I will walk on Saturday. I will buy a motorcycle soon. Oh. Let's let's see what's more. I will go to the beach. I hope so. Okay, my NC will probably come with us this weekend. And we have the last two. I will go to the supermarket this weekend. And the last one, I think it will rain this weekend. Oh, it will be perfect. Thank you for your participation. So here we have your statements and I have more examples in the next image. So let me show you the different example. In this case, we have a 15, but we are just going to read some of them, not all of the statements. For example, in the number one, it says, I will close the window, it's starting to rain. Don't worry, I will help you solve this problem. This hen will lay an egg daily. It will rain in a moment. Now, let's see, number 10. I will try to cover most of the topics for the exams. It will snow in the next month. The farmer will grow cotton on a large area of land. I will buy toys for my children tomorrow. She will get a girl guy training in next month. Um, where will the people gather? Where will the driver park the car? When will you vacate this house? Would you have some time for, for me tomorrow? So in this case, we have different expressions using the uh, the wheel. So in this case, um, they are not so sure, but we are talking about the future in some cases. Now, number two, because uh, we're talking about the use of wheel. So we have number two. And it says that, as you see on the image, we have uh, some information related to promises, requests, refusals, and offers.
And in this says that this is something called volitional will. It's about wanting to do something or not wanting to do something in the future. And we have different examples. I will help you with your homework. I will help you with your homework. Will you give me a hand? Will you give me A hand. And the last one, I won't go. That in this case is a negative statement. I won't go. In a similar way, we often use will when we are talking about a decision at the moment of speaking. We are usually making an offer or promise or uh, talking about uh, something that we want to do. And number three, that is the last one of this, I think. Yes, because we are going to talk about shall. Number three, um, we use the simple future with will in the first conditional and in other sentences that have a conditional feeling. In this case, you know that in English, we have different elements that we need to, to study. And in this case, we have the conditionals, but in this case, we're not going to um, go deep in this topic because uh, we don't have time to talk about the conditionals. And these ones require um, a couple of hours to talk about the conditionals to understand better what is the, um, the best way to use the conditionals. So in this case, it's just like to mention this part. And we have two different examples. If it doesn't rain, we will go to the park. If it doesn't rain, We will go to the park. Si no llueve, iremos al parque. En este caso estamos hablando de si algo sucede, haremos, o si algo no sucede, haremos otra cosa. En este caso, pues, estamos hablando de dos cosas, ¿verdad? Si no llueve, vamos a ir al parque. Pero si llueve, obviamente, no vamos a ir al parque. And the next one is, let's arrive early. Let's arrive early. That will give us time to relax. That will give you, I mean, give us time to relax. 
vamos a llegar temprano. Eso nos dará tiempo para relajarnos o para descansar. The last thing that we are going to see is something related to shall. That is another word that we can use in future to talk about a future. So we are going to see what is shall and how can we use this word. Shall is used mainly in the forms shall I and shall we in British English. These forms are used when you want to get someone's opinion, especially for offers and suggestions. Um, American English or the U.S. English is completely different from British English in different uh, forms. In this case, we are going to use this kind of words when we are using a like British connotation. If you want to use British English is perfect because you are a, adapting a new form of communication and it is not a um, golden rule that you need to use just the, the American English. You can use different, um, like, how can we say, um, different pronunciation of words or even a different uh, construction of these ideas related to the English language. And in this case, we are going to use shall when we are uh, focusing on British English. And in this case, we can uh, use it with pronouns I and we when we want to get someone's opinion. Esto más que todo lo vamos a utilizar si estamos enfocados en el inglés británico. Um, básicamente el shall lo vamos a utilizar con los pronombres yo y nosotros, y es para tener la opinión de alguien. So in that case, you can use this when you are like focusing on British English. And we have the last examples. And in this case, we have, shall I open the window? Shall I open the window? And in this case, we can like think about it, this equation. Maybe it's, it want to say the same thing, like, do you want to open the window? En este caso, esta frase nos puede servir como esta pregunta también. ¿Quieres que abra la ventana? Should I open the window? Entonces son como eh, partes, ¿verdad? De cómo podemos utilizar esta información. And the last one, where shall we go in? tonight y se puede traducir a I mean go tonight in this case what is your opinion
¿Dónde deberíamos ir esta noche? Aquí es donde ya estamos nosotros pidiendo una opinión específica de lo que queremos hacer o de dónde queremos ir en este caso, porque es un um, está hablando sobre ir a comer o ir o salir, ¿verdad? Esa noche. Now, we're just going to see the other, uh, the last two things or the last two videos that we have on the platform just to end this session. That is the last one. So we are going to see the first one that is related to the use of for and since. And we were talking about um, this topic. So we have some information related to for and since, and now we are going to complete the ideas that we have about this topic. So um, let's pay attention to the last videos and we are going to see something related to for and since. Hello, in this session, the use of for and since will be explained. Note the expressions. For and since. How long did you live in Thailand? I lived there for two years. It was wonderful. How long have you lived in Miami? I've lived here for six months. I love it here. I've lived here since last year. I'm really happy here. Let's talk about for and since. For plus period of time, for six years, for a week, for a month, for hours, for two hours. I have worked here for five years. Present perfect with four. She has lived here for 20 years. We have taught at this school for a long time. Alice has been married for three months. They have been at the hotel for a week. Since plus a specific moment. Since this morning, since last week, since yesterday, since I was a child, since Wednesday, since two o'clock. I have worked here since 1990. Present perfect with since. She has lived here since 1980. We have taught at this school since 1965. Alice has been married since March 2nd. They have been at the hotel since last Tuesday. Okay, here we have the information related to foreign scenes, and we have seen something related to this topic, and also we have the um, the uh, um, the table in which we have the specification of the use of foreign scenes. And now, this is the last topic that we are going to see in this course, that is the Lincoln Sounds. So we are going to pay attention to this information, and we are going to know what are they about? So let's pay attention. Yeah. Hi, in this lesson, we will work on pronunciation in order to sound natural by linking final t and t sounds in verbs with vowels that follow. Listen and practice. Final t and d sounds in verbs are linked to the vowels that follow them. Have you cooked lunch yet? Yes, I've already cooked it. Have you ever tried Cuban food? Yes, I tried it once in Miami. Now, I want you to practice answering the following questions. Use it in your responses. Pay attention to the linked sound. Make sure you record your response. Follow the example. Have you ever cut your hair? Yes, I've cut it. No, I haven't cut it. Okay, in this case, it's a very, very short uh, video related to the link sounds. And in this case, it's just related to um, how we pronounce different words. Um, but in this case, it's just to sound more natural when we're speaking in English. So in that case, you have the, um, the examples there and how to pronounce. In this case, it's más que todo con el sonido de la T y de la D que hacemos ciertos sonidos al finalizar eh, las frases o las palabras y esa es la parte en la que eh, nosotros necesitamos también practicar eh, ese sonido, ¿verdad? Para que no se, no se escuchen tan forzados. And in this case, the linking is a pronunciation technique that allows the speaker to smoothly say two or more words together. 
en este caso son eh, técnicas, ¿verdad? Para poder eh, pronunciar eh, dos palabras juntas. But I'm going to put the examples here. I'm just going to show you some examples on the document. We are going to finish because we have like five minutes. So it's enough time. And we have here the examples. We have the word redress. Big gorilla. Hot tomato and then we have feel lucky. But these ones are not the uh, Lincoln sounds. In this case, when we have this one, we can have it like this. Red dress, red dress. Then in the next one, V Gorilla, V Gorilla. Hot tomato, hot tomato. Es básicamente no separar, ¿verdad? Eh, algunas palabras, eh, feel lucky. Feel lucky. Es decirlas juntas o lo más rápido posible, pero en este caso son ejemplos aparte, ya que en el video hablaba de los sonidos T y D, que básicamente es para eso, ¿verdad? Para eh, make the language kind of, um, or to sound more uh, familiar with the, with the language and also to sound more like a uh, native speaker because you know that when we are talking in English we make a lot of pauses and we speak kind of a slow and native speakers is speaking a different like um way they are talking really fast and in some cases we are like kind of I don't know surprised when they are speaking English because they are very very uh, fast talking but it is not like they can speak faster than us. It's like they may work shorter. Ellos acortan las palabras en muchos de los casos o utilizan eh, frases específicas, ¿verdad? Para referirse a ciertas cosas. And that's why we need to, to practice um, all of that information or all of that um, things that we know uh, related to the language that is not just grammar, it's also uh, the way they are using the language. And in this case, the Lincoln sounds, the pronunciation of the high pitch or something like that, um, and how to sound more natural when speaking, it is necessary that we can practice that kind of things to sound better. In this case, it's not like we are not going to sound uh, like native speakers. Of course, we can sound like native speakers, but we need to follow this kind of information or this kind of things to sound like a native speaker. We are not, uh, someone said that they um, learn English uh, talking with people on the streets and they are not uh, 
learning grammar. They are learning how to communicate their ideas. So that is very important for us to to um to talk with others, to practice with others, uh, to make our um process better and significant. So we need to practice talking, not just um uh, learning some uh, grammar parts. Now, in this kind of courses, you are uh, learning grammar, you are learning how to create statements, you are learning how to make sentences, but you need to practice too. So you have the information now, and then you are going to practice. So now it's time to end. So this is the end of this course, and we are in the last day of this module. So I just want to say thank you for your time. It was a pleasure to be working with you through this month. I am wishing you luck with the other uh, courses that you are going to take and also with your life and you, with your job. And remember the phrases that we have every Monday. You are worthy and you have a, a powerful mind and you are powerful inside. So you need to believe in yourself and you can achieve a lot of goals. So thank you for your time and good look in the future. So goodbye. Goodbye, teacher. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye-bye.